today I'll be talking on one of the most common injuries of the knee joint, which is the ACL injury, or also called as anterior cruciate ligament injury. So first, coming to the anatomy of the knee joint. So the uh, knee joint includes the thigh bone as well as the leg bone. But the main stability is provided by four major ligaments of the knee joint. Uh, they are called the anterior cruciate ligament, the posterior cruciate ligament, the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament. So there are four ligaments, two inside the knee joint, which uh, help in providing stability and two uh, ligaments on either side of the knee joint, which provide in sideways stability. So these uh, ligaments are the most important structures which give stability to the knee joint. Coming to the anatomy or what is this ACL ligament? So this ACL ligament is a band which attaches from the thigh bone going down to the neck bone and it is situated in front of the knee. There is another ligament called the PCL which again attaches from the thigh bone to the neck bone but it is on the back of the knee. But the most common injury that occurs in the knee joint that is about 80% of the knee injuries is anterior cruciate ligament injury. So, coming to the function of the anterior cruciate ligament. What is the main function? The main function of this ligament or this band is to limit the anterior movement of the knee joint. So, whenever the knee bends and straightens, this ligament provides stability. It does not allow the thigh bone to move forward or backward. The second important function of this ligament is it provides rotational stability to the knee joint. That means whenever we twist and turn, it does not allow the knee to excessively rotate. So it provides rotational stability. So one is it provides front and back stability. The second is it provides rotational stability. So these two are the most important functions of the anterior cruciate ligament. What is the mechanism of injury? When does it get injured? One is whenever there is high contact or high velocity injuries, uh, there is uh, injury to the knee joint thereby causing a tear in this ligament. Uh, usually in high contact injuries, uh, associated with ACL injury will be a meniscal injury that is the injury to the cushion or there can be associated other ligament injuries. The second most common uh, mechanism of injury is uh, by non-contact injury when there is a rapid deceleration, that is when a patient is running or walking very fast and then there is a sudden stop and twisting of the knee occurs and thereby causing tear to this ligament. And whenever the patient lands in a very awkward position from a certain height, that can also cause awkward twisting of the knee joint and thereby causing uh, injury to the anterior cruciate ligament. So what are the symptoms? So whenever there is an injury to the knee joint, uh, there is always a popping sound which is heard in the knee joint. So this is the most common symptom and uh, the knee swells up. There is collection of blood inside the knee joint called hemarthrosis and uh, patient will have difficulty in walking and also bending the knee joint. And uh, as this injury becomes chronic, that is after about three weeks, the patient gives history of instability or history of giving way. That means when the patient is trying to walk, uh, there is a giving way of the knee joint or instability. The patient suddenly feels like he is going to fall down and there is no stability in the knee joint. So these are the common symptoms that occur with anterior cruciate ligament injuries. So what are the signs? So when the patient usually comes with these symptoms to our OPD, we check. One is uh, there is usually uh, swelling in the knee joint. There is a uh, uh, wasting of the muscles when the patient comes and presents late. The most common presentation is whenever we try to pull the leg forward, so there is excessively abnormal movement of the knee joint. So the knee joint is very unstable and there is uh, what we call as anterior drawer test positive. So there is a lot of laxity in the knee joint. So these tests help us to clinically determine whether there is an anterior cruciate ligament injury. There are also certain other tests called Lachman test and pivot shift test which, will, which aids us in diagnosing this clinically. What uh, 
So once we clinically suspect that there is an anterior cruciate ligament injury, we ask for a certain investigation. One is X-ray to see if there is any bony injury involved. But on the X-ray, we cannot visualize this ligament. So always uh, we ask for a MRI scan to determine whether there is a tear in the anterior cruciate ligament injury. So the MRI is a gold standard investigation in diagnosing the anterior cruciate ligament injury and it is a very sensitive test 90 to 98% of sensitivity and it also helps in identifying if there is any uh, edema around the bone to suggest whether the injury is acute or chronic. So the MRI is the gold standard investigation where it can clearly give us uh, uh, the uh, diagnosis. Coming to the treatment of ACL injuries. So one is conservative, the other is surgical. So when do we uh, conservatively or non-operatively treat? Uh, in patients who are willing to make lifestyle changes and avoid the activities that cause recurrent instability. So uh, aggressive rehabilitation program and also functional knee brace can be provided in conservative uh, uh, treatment. But what is the disadvantage with uh, not treating or conservatively treating anterior cruciate ligament injuries? So whenever there is ACL tear, what it does is it causes instability to the knee joint. That means there is frequent friction between the thigh bone and the leg bone. So whenever the patient is trying to walk past, whenever the patient is uh, going down the stairs or patient wants to play any sporting activity, so this causes instability in the knee joint. So there is frequent wear and tear, uh, thereby it causes cartilage damage and it causes uh, arthritis in the knee joint. So any untreated ACL tears leads to uh, a very early arthritis of the knee joint. So therefore we suggest that the ideal treatment for complete ACL tears would be arthroscopic ACL reconstruction surgery. So what do we do in this? arthroscopic ACL reconstruction. So the indications for surgery, like I said, is recurrent episodes of giving way or recurrent swelling and recurrent instability in the knee joint. So patients would complain that they are feeling the knee joint is unstable and whenever they walk, it gives way and there is a lot of wobbling that happens in the knee joint. These are the patients who require definitive surgery. So when do we plan the surgery? So we always wait for at least three weeks from the time of injury before taking the patient up for surgery. So in this three weeks, we allow all the swelling, the hemarthrosis or the blood that is collected in the knee joint to subside. The second thing is during the three weeks, we advise the patient certain exercises so that before the surgery, the patient would have achieved almost full range of motion. So this helps in faster rehabilitation post-surgery. So usually we do not operate immediately after the injury. We usually give about three to four weeks of time before we take up the patient for surgery from the uh, time of injury. So what do we do in this surgery? So we reconstruct the anterior cruciate ligament. That means that we uh, provide a new graft to the patient. So where is this graft taken from? The most common is called as the autograft. That means the graft is taken from the patient himself. There are also uh, grafts that can be taken from cadaveric labs. And the four, third one is the synthetic, that is uh, synthetically prepared implants that are available, which can be used as graft. But the most common that we use is autograft. That means we take a ligament, uh, other ligament from the patient's own body. So which are the commonly used autografts? So we take grafts from around the knee itself. So they are called either the hamstring graft or it is the bone patellar tendon bone graft or it is also called as the other one that we use is called as the quadriceps graft. So the, these are the main, three main grafts that we take depending on the requirement of the individual patient. But the most commonly used among grafts is the hamstring graft. So what is the technique in arthroscopy? So arthroscopy is nothing but a keyhole surgery where we do not open the joint completely. 
there are only uh, about two small incisions of about one centimeter made on either side of this patellar tendon. So there is a telescope which is called as the arthroscope which we insert into the knee joint. So this is the viewing instrument. So once we place this into the knee joint, uh, we can visualize this on the monitor. So first is we do a diagnostic arthroscopy. That means we put the arthroscope, we examine for all the ligaments, ACL, PCL, the menisci or the cushions and also the cartilage. So all this can be visualized. So before actually performing the surgery, we first visualize and reconfirm our diagnosis and see to uh, the anterocruciate ligament as to what extent the tear has occurred. So once this is done, we take the graft from the patient. The graft is prepared uh, as uh, closely uh, in resemblance to the anterocruciate ligament. After the graft is prepared, we make small tunnels in the tibia as well as in the femur and so that we can pass the graft. So once the tunnels are made, we pass the graft into the knee joint along the direction of the anterocruciate ligament. So it is called as anatomic fixation of the ACL graft. That means uh, in the same direction as which the native ACL was there, we pass the graft in the same direction and there are various fixation methods. So once the graft is passed, we have to fix it on the thigh bone as well as the leg bone. On the thigh bone, most commonly we use something called as the endo button, which is uh, held onto the thigh bone. We pull the graft, we attain the adequate length of the graft that is needed and we also achieve the adequate tension as the native ACL. And on the tibial side, we use something called as the bio screw. So the bio screw is a uh, biodegradable screw which degrades into the bone itself. So later on there is no need to go ahead and remove the implant. So it gets degraded within the bone itself. So once the surgery is done, the most important part uh, after the surgery is rehabilitation to achieve normal function. So usually what happens once the uh, surgery is done, we put the patient on something called as the knee brace or the belt. The patient is allowed to walk from the very next day itself. If it is only a ACL reconstruction surgery, then we allow full weight bearing as well. So the patient is independently walking from the very next day, uh, putting full weight bearing, only that uh, he will be on a knee brace. So in phase one, we uh, also start allowing a gradual knee range of motion exercises uh, from 0 to 2 weeks it is about uh, 90 degrees from the 3rd to 5th week we allow full range of motion and uh, after 6 weeks we uh, ask the patient to uh, gradually start walking without the knee brace he is allowed to even uh, start slight jogging or running at the 6th week the only thing that we don't allow uh, from 6 weeks to 6 months is any sudden twisting or turning sports. Sports activity is not allowed up to 6 months because the graft that we put in has to integrate into the bone. So uh, till then they are not allowed to do sudden twisting or turning sports but they are allowed to start jogging and running from the 6th week itself. There are uh, certain complications that occur with this uh, surgery like uh, stiffness, there can be uh, loosening of the graft, there can be infection, uh, deep vein thrombosis and uh, recurrent instability. But uh, correctly performed surgery and uh, very uh, strict and supervised uh, rehabilitation will allow the patient to achieve full function and also get back to sporting activity. So arthroscopic ACL reconstruction is a very successful surgery and uh, it allows the patient to get back to their normal activity as well as to their uh, sporting activity. Uh, joining uh, this live uh, Facebook session, if you have any doubts or queries, you can always uh, comment in the comments uh, section below and uh, we will further meet you in the next uh, sessions on FB Live.